Hey everyone, my name is Patrick Cunetta, and welcome back to The Rideshare Hub. If you're new here, The Rideshare Hub is a channel all about becoming a better rideshare driver and making more money. Before we begin the video, if you're interested in becoming an Uber or Lyft driver and you want to get a sign-on bonus, then use the links in the description to sign up. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. All right, so in this video, we're talking about five tips for new Uber Eats drivers. I'd like to begin by saying that I've been driving Uber Eats for over a year at this point. I've done over a thousand trips and I've made quite a few thousand dollars driving Uber Eats. So I'm just gonna share with you guys some tips that have really helped me in my journey, helped me um, with my driving process, and hopefully, you know, these will help you guys out as well. So tip number one, if you are, you know, brand new to driving or if you maybe signed up but you haven't driven yet, it's just to get out there and drive. You know, it's gonna take some time to develop the best schedule, develop the best routine and strategy, and just get used to it in general. So it might seem a little intimidating at first, you know, just getting out there and delivering food to strangers, you know, just, you know, putting their food in your car and showing up at the house and finding apartments and things like that. But it's really not that intimidating. Once you get into the flow of things, it's gonna be super easy and it's gonna feel just so natural, just, you know, driving and just dropping things off. It's like a little game. You know, you, you go online on your phone and a little order pops up and you accept it and then it just navigates you on the little mini map, you know, have a little uh, dash mount for your phone and you just drive over to the restaurant, pick it up, you know, show them the phone and then you just navigate to the house and drop it off. It's like a little video game, you know? You just literally follow the little map and, you know, drive where you need to go. And it's really easy. It's really, you know, like I said, it's not that scary, not that intimidating once you get into the flow of things. So, you know, just be persistent and, you know, just get out there and take that first action and, you know, develop that process. That's going to be my number one tip of advice to you guys. You know, just don't be afraid to get out there and drive. Tip number two is going to be part of the driving strategy, and that is to figure out the best times and the best places to drive and go online. You know, this is gonna take some time to develop, like I said in the first tip. You know, it's gonna take time for you to develop and figure out the best spots, just kind of getting a feel for it. And a lot of it's common sense. Think about the busiest areas of your city, of your town that you live in. You know, think about other, you know, neighboring, maybe even neighboring cities that are super busy. I live just north of Portland, Oregon. If I wanted to, I could go down and drive in Portland. Um, I, I, I do pretty well in here in Vancouver, Washington, so I don't really need to do that. But think about the best places and the best times to drive. You know, obviously it's going to be busiest around lunchtime, which, you know, if you start around 10, 10 a.m. to like 1 or 2 p.m., um, you'll get plenty of orders around there, especially think about businesses. You know, I get a lot of apart like business office uh, office buildings around that time. Um, people just at work, you know, at different sh little shops and things like that. So a lot of those places will order, you know, people are just out ordering lunch, you know, just on their regular, you know, day to day job. So that's definitely a, you know, you know, one thing to think about. Of course, if you think about in the evening time dinner as well, you're going to have people ordering family dinners. Um, those are going to be usually bigger orders, things like that. Um, you might get more tips around that time as well, too. So put these, you know, just put these things into consideration if you, you know, are trying to develop that schedule for yourself to drive, which is definitely another thing to do as well, because having that consistency and that routine is going to keep you keep you going and keep you motivated it's very easy to get lazy and be like nah i don't want to drive today uh, especially you know without somebody holding you accountable so you got to hold yourself accountable in that sense but i won't stray off topic too far here like i said it's just figuring out the best times and the best places to drive you know if you live in a pretty busy area or if you you know can get a decent amount of orders from your house then go online from your house i do this every day i don't live in the busiest part of town but i just you know when i want to start the day obviously i get ready to go and everything and i just go online from my phone make sure my sounds turn on and i just have my phone sitting next to me you know with the sound on and i just do some work on my computer or you know whatever else i want to do until i get my first order and typically i'll get it within a couple minutes so like i said if you maybe don't get orders from your house you might need to drive into town and start you know just go online while you're driving um, um, but if you are in a good place and, you know, just test it out, you know, if just if you are in a good place where you can get, you know, pretty uh, steady amount of orders from your house, then just start from your house and then go from there. But yeah, you know, like I said, you'll get a feel for it once you've been driving for a while, um, the best times and places to wait 
if you you know are if you are in between orders, which typically it's just one after another steady stream of orders. But if it is slow for any reason and you are in between orders, you'll figure out the best place to go drive and wait. You know the best parking lot to wait in in order to get the best um, you know chances to get orders. You know think about where all the restaurants are at and think about the busy parts of town and just go hang out there. And that's definitely going to be tip number two. Tip number three is something that is not necessarily required by drivers, but it is to use an insulated bag every single time. Now, Uber Eats does not supply you with these for free, unlike Grubhub and DoorDash, which do give them to you while you sign when you sign up. Um, Uber Eats, they say. I remember when I signed up, they're like, oh, we recommend that you use an insulated bag, but you know, you don't have to. So for a long time, I didn't because I thought it was going to be annoying to haul around this bag everywhere, but it's actually very, very convenient. I've been using an insulated bag for quite a while, um, and it makes things a hundred times easier because first of all, it's easier to carry the food. You know, if you have like three big bags, it's easier to carry, especially if you have drinks to deal with. You just You just have one little strap for the bag, and then you can carry the drinks with two hands. So it's super easy in that sense. And then also, it's going to keep the customer's food hot or cold. So it's going to keep it, you know, all, you know, it's there's nothing worse than ordering Uber Eats, and you know, it takes forever, and it gets there, and the food's just cold already. And sometimes that's just going to happen if you if the driver has double orders and things like that, um, or if it's a lot of traffic, or if you know any other reasons, it can be cold, and that's just going to suck. So if you have that food in the insulated bag, and you get to their doorstep and you open it up and it's just steam pouring out and everything like that, they're going to appreciate that so much more. And your customer is the person who's tipping you. That's going to be like, you know, one of the people that pays you a lot of, like that's a majority of your earnings, of your earnings, not the majority, but it's a huge chunk of your earnings, you know, is from tips. So if you can make the customer have the best experience possible, then that's going to maximize your tips. So think about that. So using an insulated bag is definitely going to help you out. If you don't have access to one, you could probably pick one up at, you know, the at the at the store somewhere. Order one on Amazon for super cheap, and that's going to make things so much easier for you, and it's going to maximize your tips a lot. So insulated bag, don't forget that. Tip number four is also along the lines of maximizing your earnings, and that is just to be polite to everybody and be patient and just be a uh, be a nice person. <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse than you know. A uh, restaurant having to deal with an, an Uber Eats driver who's just being rude and impatient, like, oh my gosh, are you guys really taking this long? And, you know, they're like just complaining about every little thing. And, you know, if, if one little thing goes wrong, they're going to start yelling at people. Like, that's just a bad experience for, first of all, the restaurant in the first place. They're not going to put a lot of priority in helping you out if you're being rude with them all the time. So, you know, <laughs> being polite to the restaurant, first of all, just check in, walk in, say, hey, I'm here for, Uber, I have an Uber Eats order for, you know, Janelle or Michael, or whoever you have, or if they ask you for the code, just, you know, show them the code or tell them the code. And that's pretty much it. Just be polite. Just be like, hey, you know, how's it going? Uh, and just be patient. Just be patiently wait on your phone if you do need to wait. Um, obviously, some restaurants are going to be slower than others. Some of them you can go through the drive through Some of them you can't. But in some cases, you are going to have to wait, especially if it's a really big order at a really slow restaurant like Red Robin or something like that. So you are going to have to wait at some point, one you know, one or another. So just just be patient. You know, like I said, if you want to hang out and just do some work on your phone, play some games, watch some YouTube, bring some headphones, whatever you want to do, just make the best use of that time where you're just sitting there doing nothing. You know, I think it's you know, if you can figure out how to be productive while you're just sitting there waiting, then you're going to get a lot more done in your day and it's and it's also going to feel like less of a wait time because you're actually you know engaged in doing something so if you can figure out something good to do while you're waiting for orders if you want to just read a book or something like that then go ahead and do that but you know just be patient and be 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 kind be you know polite to everybody and then on the in the last part of that is to be polite to the customer of course so you know of course get there as you know quick and efficiently as possible to not keep them waiting super long sometimes there's nothing you can do about wait times but yeah, just be efficient, get there, you know, go up to the door, of course. Don't get to the person's house and call me like, hey, can you come get the food? Or text them, something like that. Just go to the door. That's what people expect when they order food. You know, even if it's an apartment complex, even if it's a hotel, park your car in a good spot, find a good spot to park your car, figure out where the apartment's at, figure out where the hotel number's at, and or the hotel room's at, and just go inside and deliver it to them. You know, take it up to them, and and a lot of people will appreciate that a lot. You know, especially if it's like a hotel or something. People are like, wow, you know, you even took it up to my room and everything. And it's very easy to find 
apartments and very easy to find hotel rooms. It, you know, there's like a map at every single apartment complex if you really need to use that. Or you can just follow the alphabet and find it. It's pretty easy once you get used to it, like I said. And hotels are easy too. If it's, if it's room 230, it's on the second floor. If it's room 550, it's on the fifth floor. So, you know, it's really real easy to find floors too. If you get lost, you can obviously ask the hotel people. Uh, it's super easy. And that's another way to maximize your tips. And when you drop it off, just be polite. You know, be like, hey, how's the night going? You know, or how's your morning going? I got an order for whatever. Use their name as well. People like to hear their names. It's a, it's a psychological thing I learned a long time ago in sales. People like to hear their names. They like when you use their name. So be like, hey, hey, Michael, how's it going? You know, hey, Jeff, how's it going? I got the order for from Red Robin for you here. And then you, as you're open, you, you know, just be polite as you're opening your bag and the steam pours out and the smell hits their nose and just be like, yeah, here's everything for you. And then, you know, just tell them to have a great night and thank them and just be genuinely polite to them. And I've noticed that even if people don't tip you right away, I get tons and tons of tips later on, you know, like throughout the night. If you if you get an order and you deliver it and they don't tip you at the door, you know, don't be all pissed off about it because they can tip you afterwards. You know, you can get a tip, first of all, uh, on the app instantly when they order or cash when you get there or afterwards on the app. So there's three different times they can tip you. So if they don't do it right away, then don't be all rude with them. Don't be all pissy and don't be all frustrated. You know, just stay positive and you will get tons and tons of tips a lot of days i'll get like 10 20 bucks in tips the next day you know just because people are like oh i forgot to tip them yesterday and they'd go on there and tip you so just be polite and that is going to take you a lot further and you're going to make a lot more money and the last tip tip number five is just to be persistent and to stay positive like I said, like I mentioned earlier, you know, if you are trying it out a little bit and you're frustrated and you're not making as much money as you thought or something didn't go your way, then just keep going and keep being persistent and keep going because when you develop that routine and the strategy and everything in order to maximize your earnings, then you can have a great experience. And like I said, sometimes we're going to be slow. Sometimes we're going to be extremely busy. Sometimes you're going to make eight bucks an hour and sometimes you're going to make 30 bucks an hour. So that's just what it is. That's the, that's the platform. It can be volatile. It's not, you know, exactly completely consistent like a regular nine to five job where you're just like, oh, I make exactly $13 an hour. It's going to be, you know, it's going to, it's going to vary depending on the orders and depending on this and this, you know, there's like a million factors that go into it. And, you know, it might just be bad luck. You might just get a string of you know, like $3 orders or $4 orders. And then on the other hand, you might get a string of $12 orders. So it's, it's you know, just being persistent and staying positive and not getting discouraged and, you know, not holding on to these bad experiences you have. Just keep going and keep building and keep improving and you can make great money. And it's, it's that's probably, you know, one of the best things to sum up this video. Just stay positive. Because when you are constantly negative, when you're constantly complaining, you're constantly, you know, thinking, you know, oh, this is going to take so long. They're not going to tip me this and this and this. Then you're just going to bring about a bad experience into your day because you're constantly thinking about bad things and then bad things are going to happen. And then you're just going to view everything with a negative perspective. On the other hand, if you're positive, if you're like, I'm just out here making money, enjoying myself, just appreciate the fact that you are have so much freedom to drive around and make money on your own schedule completely. That's just so cool. So don't forget that. Just stay positive. You know, appreciate the opportunity that you have. When you get to restaurants, like I said, just be polite, be positive, be patient. And, you know, you're going to have a good experience. And then at the end of the day, you're going to be like, oh, wow, I have 60 bucks just from driving around. Uh, I didn't even feel like I was working. I was just you know, hanging out, driving around, just enjoying myself. If you want to drive around, just play music as loud as you can. You can do that. Listen to audiobooks, whatever you want to do. You can just do whatever while you're driving around. So it's such a cool opportunity. There's no reason to be angry or negative about everything. And that's just going to bring about a negative experience. So like I said, just stay positive, stay persistent, keep on going, build that routine to build that schedule, build that strategy, and you can make tons and tons of money on Uber Eats. So those are my five tips for new Uber Eats drivers. Hope they helped you out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. Let me know any other questions you guys have. Thank you everyone for watching. Again, if you are interested in signing up for Uber or Lyft and you want to sign on bonus, use the link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Also, don't forget to check out my own YouTube channel. I'm currently obviously doing a guest vlog on the Riser Hub, which is awesome. But my channel is Patrick Cunetta, it is my name. You know, I create videos every single day 
I've been doing so for over five months at this point. You know, my videos are all about, you know, not only Uber Eats and rideshare apps, but also about personal growth, making money, life advice, happiness, success, and also a little bit of, you know, vlogs and adventures and music and things like that. So I create YouTube videos every single day just for helping people out and for, you know, sharing my passions. So go check that out. All right, guys, this has been another episode of the Rideshare Hub. See you all next time.